Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'd like to welcome you to this uh, monthly webinar of the ICH, the International Academy for Clinical Hematology, brought to you uh, live uh, from uh, REN today. Uh, it is six o'clock in Paris, six o'clock in REN, 5 p.m. in London, uh, noon in New York. And it is my great pleasure to welcome today a top expert in the field of uh, uh, CAR T cells and lymphoma, namely Professor Rock Huo, who is the head of the hematology uh, department at the University Hospital of Rennes. This is in the west of France, in Brittany. This is a fantastic and lovely city, and I'm sure you would love to visit uh, Rennes. But for today, uh, Professor Huo, uh, who is really a top expert in the field of CAR T cells, not only in terms of clinical practice, but also in terms of translational research, he will give us an update on the latest advances in follicular lymphoma. And he has really a great experience in this field and he is also leading many of these studies which are based on the French National Registry called Descartes. And you may have seen some of these uh, lovely studies being presented in oral sessions uh, during ASH and hopefully soon at EHA. So for the time being, I'll stop here. I'll give the microphone to Professor Huo uh, but of course, this is an interactive uh, activity, so please do not hesitate to send your questions, uh, to share your comments, your suggestions, and I'll be more than happy uh, to uh, have a Q&A at the end of the webinar with Professor Huo. So, Rock, thank you for accepting tonight, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Mohammed, for the, for the very kind inv invitation and introduction. Um, I've put a, a, a map of France so that you can see where Rennes is located for those of you who, who, who are not familiar with this uh, part of France. So, um, so uh, today I will focus mostly on immune therapy and CAR T cells for the treatment of follicular lymphoma. Here are my disclosures. So as, a, as an introduction, I will uh, review very quickly uh, the current standard of care for uh, follicular lymphoma. And then I will discuss some of the novel uh, therapeutic options that have been uh, uh, presented and discovered in the recent years. And finally, uh, we will uh, talk about uh, CAR T cells in this uh, particular indication. So as you all know, uh, follicular lymphoma is an indolent lymphoma with a, a generally a very good prognosis. Um, it is expected that about 80% of patients are likely to be alive uh, 10 years after initial diagnosis, and the median overall survival is usually uh, beyond 20 years. And as an illustration, I've uh, represented here the, the uh, OS curves of the PRIMA study, which has been updated at nine years. However, there are some remaining issues with uh, follicular lymphoma. Uh, first, we know that there is a, uh, some subset of patients still have a poor prognosis, and those include uh, patients called POD24, um, which means they've uh, pr progressed or relapsed within two years from uh, immunochemotherapy, and these patients represent about 20% of uh, follicular lymphoma patients, and as you can see on the curve below on the left, uh, they have a poor prognosis with an overall survival, which is significantly worse compared to uh, patients without POD24. Uh, patients who relapse or are refractory may become uh, pro problematic, problematic in their management as well. And uh, uh, you know, as they relapse uh, over and over, uh, their prognosis uh, becomes worse and worse as illustrated on, on the graph on the, on the right uh, below. Uh, the second problem is, as you all know, the risk of histologic transformation uh, with a subset of these patients uh, transforming into aggressive lymphomas. And finally, uh, lympho follicular lymphoma remains an incurable disease, which uh, also requires to improve our treatments. So uh, in the recent years, there's been uh, several improvements. I've here summarized uh, some of the main uh, studies uh, for first-line treatment of follicular lymphoma. Uh, 
um, the PRIMA study, which was published uh, more than 10 years ago, uh, demonstrated the benefit of rituximab maintenance for increasing progression-free survival. Um, the gallium study, uh, demonstrated the superiority of a novel anti-CD20 antibody or binutuzumab over uh, rituximab in uh, progression-free survival. And uh, more recently, the relevant study demonstrated that a chemo-free regimen called R-square, rituximab lenalidomide, has similar, uh, had similar efficacy compared to uh, rituximab chemotherapy. So uh, in first line for patients with high tumor burden, follicular lymphoma, uh, the, the, the ESMO guidelines, um, like most international guidelines, recommend a combination of uh, anti-CD20 antibody, rituximab or obinutuzumab, with a chemotherapy, uh, usually bendamustine, CHOP, or RCVP, uh, followed by a maintenance therapy for uh, patient, responding patients. Uh, when these uh, patients uh, relapse or progress after first-line therapy, uh, they, you can receive either an, another course of immunochemotherapy uh, or uh, sometimes um, consolidated with uh, an autologous stem cell transplantation, especially uh, for patients who are young with early relapse. Or another option is the combination of rituximab and lenalidomide. Now, after uh, two lines of uh, treatment, um, if uh, when the patients relapse uh, beyond two lines, uh, then comes uh, there's less uh, specific guidelines, and this is mostly what I will be uh, discussing with you today. Um, there's been several agents which have been uh, approved in the recent years uh, by the FDA for the treatment of follicular lymphoma. And uh, as reviewed in this uh, paper, the, uh, these include uh, PI3 kinase inhibitors, such as idelalizib, um, uh, EZH2 inhibitors, such as tazemetostar, uh, immunomodulatory drugs, uh, lenalidomide in combination with rituximab, and more recently, uh, CAR T cells, CD19 CAR T cells, AXI cell uh, was approved uh, for patients uh, with relapsed refractory follicular lymphoma after two lines of, of therapy. Uh, the problem with uh, targeted therapies such as PI3 kinase inhibitors and EZH2 inhibitors, uh, as we will see uh, later on, is that the, the CR rate are really low and the duration of response is re rather short. So this is the reason why we need to improve uh, over these kind of therapies. Uh, one way uh, to improve uh, is to use bispecific antibodies. Um, as you know, there are many uh, different types of bispecific antibodies based on uh, the tumor target, the effector cells, uh, the antibody format, uh, the route of administration, uh, the construct, uh, and also the, 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 the type of uh, infusion. And um, the, the, the first uh, uh, approved uh, by specific antibodies is a blinatumabab, which is approved in BALL, not in, uh, not in uh, uh, non Hodgkin lymphoma. As you know, this is a bispecific antibody directed against CD3 and CD19. It's been evaluated in, in non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Uh, it does work, but it requires very high doses uh, of antibodies, which are responsible for a, a, a limiting uh, a neurologic toxicity. And this is the reason why uh, blinatumabab has not been uh, further developed uh, in uh, non-Hodgkin lymphomas. And uh, nowadays, uh, most of the bispecific antibodies which are being uh, evaluated uh, in clinic are uh, directed against CD3 and CD20 and not uh, CD19 like blinatumabab. And there are a number of these antibodies. We won't have time to uh, describe all of them. I've highlighted here uh, in, uh, uh, in pink uh, some of the specificities uh, uh, that some of these antibodies may have over others. Um, and we will uh, discuss uh, and review the data more specifically for four of these antibodies, uh, mosunetuzumab, glofitamab, epcoritamab, and odronextamab. Um, they, as I mentioned, they are all CD3 and CD20 antibodies. Um, 
Uh, Glofitamab is unique in the sense that it has a one to two uh, uh, format, meaning that he recognized um, uh, one, uh, two, two, uh, two sites, uh, uh, the CD3 plus two uh, sites of uh, tumor epitopes. Um, and they're all given uh, IV currently, except for epcoritamab, which is given sub-Q. So how do these uh, bispecific antibody work in uh, relapsed re refractory follicular lymphoma? Uh, the uh, currently available studies uh, are still limited, although uh, the number of patients that you can see here on these slides ranges from uh, 12 patients up to 90 uh, patients. Um, and what's uh, very impressive uh, is the response rate for all of these uh, bispecific antibodies uh, ranging from 80% uh, up to a 91% response rate. Uh, similarly, the complete re response rate is very high, uh, ranging from 50 up to 72% uh, across uh, all these different uh, antibodies. So this is uh, rather impressive for uh, patients who have uh, already failed uh, several lines of uh, therapy. Um, now, we, uh, the, the, the median follow-up is uh, usually uh, still short for most of these studies. That's the re re reason why we don't have the progression-free survival for all of these studies. We do have uh, some uh, data for mozunituzumab and odronextamab. And as you can see, the median overall uh, progression-free survival uh, ranges around uh, 17 to uh, 18 uh, months. So this is a, a table which summarizes uh, the studies that I've just uh, described before. I will just highlight the toxicity of these uh, bispecific antibodies uh, in patients with uh, follicular lymphoma. Uh, the first uh, thing to uh, mention is that uh, many of these patients experience a, a cytokine release syndrome although um, very few actually experience severe CRS. Uh, uh, most of these uh, CRS are, are very mild. Um, and the second observation is that there are very few neurologic toxicities with these bispecific antibodies, especially severe neurologic toxicities, unlike uh, what has been previously seen with uh, blinatumumab or even uh, CAR T cells. So this is a, a promising uh, uh, avenue uh, for uh, the treatment of follicular lymphoma. Uh, however, none of these bispecific uh, antibodies has yet been approved uh, for the treatment of lymphoma. Now uh, let's move to uh, CAR T cell therapy. Um, uh, several of these CAR T cells have been evaluated uh, in patients with relapse and refractory follicular lymphoma. Uh, the first one is AxiCell, which has been uh, tested in the ZUMA5 trial. And the second one is Tisa cell, which has been evaluated in the uh, ELARA trial. Uh, I won't spend much time describing the uh, uh, differences between these two CAR T cells. But one of the most uh, obvious uh, difference is the co-stimulatory domain, uh, which is CD28 for AxiCell versus 41BB for Tisa cell. Uh, all of these uh, follicular lymphoma patients were treated after at least uh, two lines of prior therapy. Uh, now, uh, let's look at the patient's characteristics for uh, both of these uh, trials. So for the ZUMA1, uh, ZUMA5 uh, trial, uh, uh, 124 uh, follicular lymphoma patients have been enrolled. Uh, the median follow-up uh, is 31 months and the median age is 60. Uh, in the ELARA trial, this uh, trial enrolled uh, 97 uh, follicular lymphoma patients. Uh, the follow-up is a, a little bit shorter, 17 months, and the median age is similar around uh, 70, uh, 57 uh, years. Uh, however, there are some uh, differences between uh, these two uh, clinical trials, uh, which are not meant to be compared uh, because the, they are uh, somewhat different. And one of the differences is that the, the uh, characteristics of the patients were different uh, with probably uh, more uh, uh, severe uh, characteristics in the ELARA trial. As you can see, there were more uh, patients with an uh, altered uh, performance status, uh, more patients with high FLIPI, more uh, prior lines of treatment, uh, more patients with prior auto, uh, more refractory patients, uh, 
more patients with POT24, and um, uh, bridging therapy was not allowed with AxiCell. So uh, in the ELARA trial, up to almost half of the patients receive a bridging therapy versus almost uh, none in the uh, Zuma-5 trial. So probably patients with more severe disease uh, treated with TISA cell in the LRA trial compared with uh, uh, the patients in the Zuma-5 uh, trial treated with AXI cell. So now let's take a look at the, at the results. Uh, this is the efficacy data and the, the uh, overall response rate uh, with AXI cell was 94%, including 79% CR, and the median progression-free survival was almost 40 months. Uh, if we look at the ELARA trial, patients treated with TISA cell, the uh, objective response rate was 80, 86%, including 69% CR uh, for a median PFS of 29 months. So very uh, impressive results, as you can see, uh, with CAR T cells in follicular lymphoma. Uh, this is showing you uh, the survival curve for uh, progression-free survival for these two uh, uh, drugs, AxiCell and TISA cell. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, very uh, promising. Uh, similarly, uh, if we look at overall survival, uh, the median OS was not reached in none of these uh, two studies. Uh, now let's, let's look at uh, toxicity. Um, in, uh, in, in these two trials, as you can see, the, the rate of CRS was uh, uh, present, uh, especially in patients treated with AxiCell in the Zuma-5 trial, as you can see, the uh, uh, up to 78% uh, of patients experienced CRS versus 48% uh, with TISA cell, uh, with a, up to 6% of severe uh, CRS uh, in patients treated is, with AXI cell and none, uh, no severe CRS with a TISA cell. Uh, and similarly for neurologic toxicity, uh, which are usually referred to as ICANs, uh, there were more uh, in patients uh, treated with AXI cell uh, versus TISA cell, 56% versus only 4% with TISA cell. And uh, same with severe ICANs, 15% versus only 1% with TISA cell. Um, so although we cannot compare these two uh, drugs and these two trials, because as I mentioned before, the, the patient's population were different between the two, uh, it seems that they both give very uh, impressive results in terms of efficacy. And it looks like the, 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 the toxicity may be uh, somewhat higher with AXI cell compared to TISA cell, but this is something we've already observed uh, with other histologies such as diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Uh, now, how does these, uh, CAR -T do these CAR T-cells compare with uh, other treatments? Uh, there's been some uh, retrospective comparison which, has been, which have been performed to compare the results of Zuma-5 and ELARA with uh, uh, a historical uh, comparison and standard of cares. Uh, the Zuma-5 was compared to a cohort called uh, SCHOLAR-5, uh, which comprised patients um, follicular lymphoma patients treated with uh, standard of care. Uh, and similarly, a LARA trial was uh, compared with the historical court called RECORD FL. In both cases, in order to be able to compare uh, these patients, uh, there's been a, a matching uh, uh, propensity score weighting in, uh, in order to allow a fair comparison. So these patients were matched uh, based on different uh, clinical and biological and prognostic uh, factors as uh, shown in this uh, slide. So I won't have time to uh, go into uh, all the details of how these patients, uh, patient population were matched, but uh, uh, they were, they were uh, um, made comparable. And what these uh, comparison, historical comparison have shown is that um, uh, patients treated with CAR T cells, as shown on the curve in blue here, experience a superior progression-free survival um, compared to uh, patients treated with uh, the standard of care. Uh, as you can see, both for, uh, in the, for the Zuma-5 trial, uh, AXI cell, and the, the ELARA trial with TISA cell. Um, most importantly, 
uh, there seems to be also a benefit in overall survival uh, to treat uh, in treating patients with CAR T cells compared to a standard of care when uh, comparing these trials with uh, the historical control, as you can see here on these uh, on these curves. So. Um, just to continue, I thought I would just show you a, 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 case, a case report for one of the uh, patients that we've treated in our center. It was actually the first patient uh, treated with TISA cell outside of a clinical trial, uh, thanks to the early uh, French early access program. This was a 59-year-old uh, male who was diagnosed with uh, follicular lymphoma at the end of 2021 with a high tumor burden, stage, one, uh, stage 3B uh, follicular lymphoma. He was uh, treated with the standard of care obinutuzumab uh, CHOP combination times six, followed by uh, maintenance uh, obinutuzumab uh, maintenance. Uh, unfortunately, these uh, patients relapsed uh, after uh, a few months of uh, maintenance therapy. Uh, he was then uh, treated with a salvage uh, immunochemotherapy or a DHAC, um, which uh, absolutely didn't work. And so he was then uh, discussed and, and proposed uh, to be treated with TISA cell uh, in, the, in the French early access program. Um, while these uh, cells were uh, being produced, the patient was first uh, bridged with uh, R-square, rituximab lenalidomide. How, unfortunately, he experienced progressive uh, disease while being treated with uh, R-square. So uh, because he had a very, very bulky disease, he was then switched to R-CHOP. And again, uh, this patient continued to progress until uh, the CAR T cells uh, came back from, uh, from, from the, the, the company. And so he was eventually infused with T cell in December 2021. He experienced only mild CRS and no neurologic toxicity, which is very uh, expected given the results uh, which I have presented to you earlier. Uh, so this is the PET CT of this patient uh, immediately before a TISA cell infusion. As you can see, he had a, a very large uh, spleen involvement uh, as well as uh, uh, lymph node uh, uh, bulky masses. Um, and only one month after a CAR T cell infusion, he, he achieved a complete metabolic response and the, the spleen almost returned to normal at this time. Uh, and again, uh, given the, the data which I presented uh, previously, this, is, this was somewhat expected, although a very spectacular response. So um, um, trying to uh, summarize uh, all this data, uh, I have here uh, summarized in this table uh, some of the most important uh, data with novel agents with re re relapsed refractory uh, follicular lymphoma patients. Um, so, uh, idelalizib, a PI3 kinase inhibitor, uh, gives uh, an antizimetostar uh, EZH2 inhibitor. Both give a uh, you know, fair amount of overall response. But the problem, as I mentioned in the introduction, is that the CR rate is really low with these agents and the progression-free survival is rather short as well. So uh, I don't think this can be considered as a, an optimal therapy for these patients. We now have some preliminary results with bispecific antibodies, which I've uh, briefly presented to you earlier. Uh, the nice thing about uh, uh, bispecific antibodies is that, as you can see, not only the, the objective response is high, but also the complete response is much higher uh, compared to uh, targeted therapies, up to 50 uh, to 70% uh, uh, complete remission. But again, the limitation here is the duration of response. And uh, so far, the, the PFS has has not been uh, spectacular, um, which ranges around 17 to 18 months. And then come the CAR T cells with axi cell and TISA cell, which I've just presented to you. And here, the response rate is high, the CR rate is high, but it seems that the progression-free survival is really uh, improved over uh, the other agents that we've just uh, described before. So, uh, I really believe that CAR T cells are really uh, 
uh, changing the, the game and, and the way we'll be treating uh, these patients uh, in the near future. So can we give CAR T cells uh, to our uh, follicular lymphoma patients uh, currently? Uh, Axi cell has been uh, approved uh, in the US by the FDA uh, for patients with relapse or refractory follicular lymphoma after two or more lines of systemic therapy. TISA cell has been approved in Europe uh, also after two lines or more of systemic therapy. And uh, Axi cell is uh, still uh, uh, should be approved soon. Uh, the approval in Europe is still pending, but it should be approved soon. Uh, I just want to mention that it will not be uh, approved at, after two lines, but after three lines of uh, therapy uh, in Europe uh, compared to instead of two lines in, uh, in the US. Um, I should also mention that these uh, two CAR T cells, Axi cell and TISA cell, are uh, accessible, uh, at least in France, in the context of an early access program. So uh, as a conclusion, uh, I think I have convinced you of the many advantages of CAR T cells in relapsed refractory follicular lymphoma um, because of their very high response rate, uh, the prolonged efficacy as demonstrated by a very prolonged PFS and who knows, potentially a cure in a, in a subset of patients. I think this is too early to tell, but the future will tell us if this is uh, true or not. Uh, the safety is good. And interestingly, I have not mentioned that, but interestingly, the safety with these same CAR T cells seem to, to be much better uh, uh, compared to the safety that is being seen with this, this uh, same CAR T cells in other indications such as uh, uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma or uh, acute uh, lymphoblastic leukemia. And finally, uh, last but not least, uh, one of the main uh, important advantages of CAR T cells is, this, as you all know, this is a single short infusion, which does not require uh, prolonged therapy and like, you know, targeted therapies or even by specific antibodies. So this is a, a once and done therapy. And this is, I think for the patients, this is a, a real advantage. And so with this, I want to thank you uh, for your attention and I will be happy to take any question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Huo for really a lovely and uh, beautiful uh, talk. I mean, I'm not a lymphoma guy, but I can assure you that everything was very clear and straightforward to the point with very, very recent data. So really, thank you very much. And we are very grateful at the IACH for you putting together uh, these lovely data. And actually, I must confess that you have a huge uh, virtual fan club, Brock, because I have already for you more than 30 or 40 questions, but uh, don't worry, you're not going to sleep here uh, today. So I tried to structure them, actually, and uh, uh, I'll identify uh, some of the uh, most uh, important, I think, uh, for our people. Uh, before going into immune therapy, we have a question because you mentioned edilalizib. Uh, and uh, historically, uh, edilalizib has been associated with some toxicities. Is there still any room for edilalizib today in follicular lymphoma? Um, well, it, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, before uh, before the CAR T cells, I think there's there's been some, uh, it was an option that we were, uh, you know, sometimes using for patients who've tried everything else. Um, Idelalizib is, is approved not only in the US, but also uh, in Europe. So this is, uh, you know, officially, this is an option. At this point, uh, I am not sure there's much uh, room left for this uh, drug. Uh, uh, at least for countries who have access to uh, image and to buy specific antibodies and CAR T cells. I think this drug will come after all that. Um, so here that brings me to a question we have, and I think it's a general question, would be good to uh, re-clarify, at least in your own practice, you personally, if tomorrow morning you have uh, in your clinic a new uh, diagnosis of follicular lymphoma, 
what would be your first line therapy? What would be the option at time of first relapse and at time of second relapse? Because we know, unfortunately, follicular lymphoma, they live long, but in general, you have multiple relapses. So what is your standard of care today? So what we do are in our center is we, we, we give uh, obinutuzumab plus R-TROP um, in those patients who can uh, 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 harbor uh, support heart trap. Uh, uh, for those who cannot, we will just give uh, obinutuzumab and CVP, for instance, uh, for elderly patients. Uh, this is our, we don't um, usually give uh, anti-CD20 plus bendamustin as opposed to what can be done in the US or, or in some other European countries like Germany. Um, the reason is because uh, first, uh, there is some uh, toxicities, especially when combined with obinutuzumab. So I would probably not recommend the combination of OB plus bendamustin. The second reason I think most importantly is that because now we have access to CAR T cells, we don't like to give bendamustin before CAR T cells. And, and because we know that it, it may become very complicated to produce CAR T cells in these patients. So I think this is another important reason for not giving bendamustin, or at least uh, wait as long as possible before giving bendamustin in these patients. So our standard of care is uh, OB plus uh, CHOP. And for relapse or refractory patients, um, if we, uh, young patients, if you uh, early relapse, many of these patients are actually transform uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma. For, so you, we would probably, we would treat them as transform uh, lymphomas and, and so give uh, RDHA, C or, you know, platinum-based uh, chemotherapy, salvage therapy, uh, consolidated with uh, transplant, autologous stem cell transplantation for fit patients. Um, for patients who relapse uh, either late, uh, for uh, late relapses, we can uh, repeat uh, some chemotherapy. So, uh, uh, and for early relapse, uh, we give the combination of lenalidomide uh, and rituximab uh, very often. Excellent. So, Thank you. yeah. Thank you very much. We, 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 we have a question from Dr. Giuseppe Milan. Uh, who's asking about the role of uh, radiation therapy in follicular lymphoma today? Uh, I think the, the most um, uh, the potential place for radiation therapy is, uh, you know, uh, localized disease at diagnosis. Uh, so stage one, two, uh, localized disease. Uh, some believe that radiation therapy for local disease may actually cure uh, these patients. It's very hard to say because we know that the prognosis for these patients is really excellent, even without uh, radiation therapy. Uh, we do tend to irradiate these patients with uh, localized disease, especially when the, uh, there is no um, toxicity expected uh, for these patients. If there is any uh, toxicity expected, I don't think this is worth uh, necessarily to expose these patients with to radiation. But uh, uh, yeah, this is this is still a matter of debate, and I don't think we have a very strong uh, uh, studies to support uh, radiation or no radiation for these kind of patients. I think this is the only situation where radiation, or I mean, uh, beside palliative care, of course, but. Um, Thank you very much. That's very clear. So that brings me to the group of questions about CAR T cells, because actually this is likely to be the big uh, revolution, I think. Uh, and uh, uh, you've mentioned, for instance, that uh, actually in the ELARA trial, uh, these guys received uh, a median of four lines of therapies. I mean, and it was highlighted by a member of the audience that the maximum was 13 uh, lines of therapy. So one may wonder what are the 13 lines of therapies. So it looks like, although I think you have been extremely cautious in bet when comparing between trials that uh, the ELARA trial, the toxicity in the ELARA trial was significantly uh, lower. It was really very low, almost close to zero compared to the Zuma 5 trial. Is there a good uh, explanation for this? We have several questions about this issue. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, these results are similar to what has been described in diffuse large B cell lymphoma, for instance, and with the Descartes registry, for instance, we've compared this after uh, matching the patients. So we know that uh, patients' characteristics may also make a difference, especially the tumor bulk uh, may be responsible for more uh, toxicity. So it's very important to actually um, have comparable patients when you want to compare the, the CAR T cells between each other. And we've seen that uh, in, in diffuse RGB cell lymphoma, uh, uh, AXI cell was more toxic, especially uh, uh, induced more uh, severe uh, neurologic toxicities uh, compared to T cells. So I think this is the same kind of uh, uh, observation that we're being, uh, which are being made here. Uh, now you're asking, why is that? I think one of the reason is because uh, Axi cell is a, has a CD28 co-stimulatory molecule versus uh, 41BB for T cell. And because Axi cell has a CD28 co-stimulatory molecule, it gets activated more quickly. It expands more quickly. And we know that expansion uh, also correlates with uh, not only efficacy, but also toxicity. I think this is one reason at least. So that brings me to a comment, and I wonder whether you agree with this comment from uh, a colleague in the audience saying, well, the treatment of follicular lymphoma, I'm just reading, should be like a marathon. So therefore, we should use always the less toxic approach. Uh, in another word, uh, then you have uh, to use the less toxic CAR T cell. Would you be in agreement with this, with such a statement? So uh, yes, I completely agree. Uh, um, however, it really depends on uh, what kind of toxicities we're talking about. Is it acute or chronic toxicity? Here, it's mostly acute toxicities, meaning that you know this is something that's going to happen during, you know, the first ten or fifteen days after infusion, and then resolves completely uh, without any sequela. So. Uh, I, I don't think this kind of toxicity uh, does matter as much as you know chronic or delayed toxicities that patients will uh, continue to have over time. So, um, uh, so I agree that toxicity is important. I think uh, we need to think long term with these patients, but uh, I'm not sure there will be uh, you know differences in terms of long term toxicities between axicel and tizacel. But the future will tell us. Okay, wonderful. So I have one other question about toxicities from the audience. How do you treat or do you manage ICANs? So it's very interesting. Uh, actually, we do not manage ICANs uh, in the same way for patients with follicular lymphoma compared with diffuse large B cell lymphoma, I have to say. Although this is not in any particular guidelines, but because of this data, because we know that only few of these patients will actually uh, experience severe toxicities, because we know that we actually are less, uh, in, uh, we, we do less intervention or later intervention uh, because you know, the, the, the whole goal of, of, of intervention is just to prevent severe toxicities. So if you already know that very few of these patients, if none actually will actually uh, experience severe toxicity, there's no, really no need to give them to silizumab or, or steroids. And, Actually, at least for patients treated with T cell for follicular lymphoma, we ne we, we've never used to see nor uh, steroids at this point. Excellent. So here, uh, 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 I mean, these are really exciting, fascinating questions. Uh, uh, given the, uh, again, I'm reading a good question here, I think. Uh, given the impressive results of CAR T cells in follicular lymphoma, why not giving them earlier? in the course of therapy. And uh, there is another question, how to explain the difference in the label between US and uh, Europe? Uh, is there a specific reason related to the data? So um, shall we give CAR T cells earlier? Um, I think that's a real question, uh, especially when you, when you see these spectacular results. Uh, there are some uh, clinical trials. So, You've probably heard about these, you know, phase three trials in diffuse large B cell lymphoma oh, comparing uh, CAR T cells versus standard of care. So similar trials are about to start or have started recently to compare CAR T cells versus standard of care. And, and, and they actually may change the way uh, we treat these patients in the future. So I think 
and, and, and one, I think, very important and remaining question is, will these CAR T cells cure a subset of patients eventually, which would prevent them from, uh, you know, needing uh, other therapies in the future? So I, I totally agree. I mean, that's especially because the toxicity seems to be very acceptable. Uh, this is something we want to try earlier, probably. And regarding the second question, I don't know. I, I don't have the answer. I'm sorry. I I was surprised to see that. I, I I didn't get a chance to talk with the regulatory agencies to understand why. So I have no explanation at this point. If you do have, please share this information with me. I'd be interested. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, uh, speaking about cure and long-term outcome, we have a comment. Why don't we envision some maintenance therapy after CAR T cells? So what, what kind of maintenance therapy you mean? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, for instance, I mean, lenalidomide is a good drug in lymphoma. It's approved uh, in earlier lines. Why not giving, I, I, I'm just speculating about the question. I mean, the question was about, can we give maintenance therapy after CAR T cells in follicular lymphoma? And for instance, mm. my speculation is, can we give lenalidomide? Can we give checkpoint mm. inhibitors? Can we give something to further improve the results? Mm. I think that the, the philosophy of CAR T cells is, you know, this is this is a once and done therapy. So this is a special, you know, one of the advantages to avoid, you know, giving treatment over and over. Um, and, and the maintenance with CAR T cell, it should be a natural maintenance, you know, due to CAR, the CAR T cells themselves. And and this is the question of persistence. Um, it will be very important to see if uh, you know persistence of CAR T cells actually correlates with uh, long-term efficacy. It's interesting to note that persistence does not always correlate with long-term efficacy. This is persist. We know that persistence is very important for uh, BALL. Uh, however, we know that th it doesn't seem to be very important for diffuse large B cell lymphomas. I would bet that persistence of CAR T cells will be important for follicular lymphoma as well as mental cell lymphoma. And because we've shown that maintenance in general was important for this kind of lymphoma as opposed to diffuse large B cell lymphoma for which all the, the clinical trials which have tested maintenance therapy be, you know, came back negative. So, um, so I, I would rather uh, try to optimize the CAR T cells in order to uh, have a bit better persistence as opposed to adding another drug uh, on the long term, but although it's very possible that lenalidomide may actually improve their efficacy, but that would require, you know, that would necessitate uh, require to expose these patients again to no, so, other drugs. So we have a comment about this from uh, Professor Chabano in Marseille. And by the way, hello, Christian. Thank you for following uh, uh, the ICH webinar. So he has two comments. I will try to dismiss one because for the sake of time, but uh, he, what, the first part of his question is about hypogammaglobulinemia and the infections uh, observed after uh, CAR T cells follicular lymphoma. Are we in a similar scenario compared to DLBCL? Um, I so I don't I don't have the data on top of my head. I don't know if this has been looked in too much detail. So I'm sorry, I cannot answer this question precisely. But 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 you you're not concerned about the high rate of infections. No, I mean, in, in, uh, no. In our small experience, we've treated uh, you know almost ten patients at this point. I mean, there's it's not been a concern so far. But uh, we'll, yeah, I mean, what I hear we'll from see. colleagues, that's not really a big matter of concern. But but I, I I agree that if you're looking for long-term persistence of CAR T cells, this may become actually an issue. I agree. Actually, by the way, that brings me, this is my question. Do we have data in lymphoma in general about uh, the long-term persistence of uh, CAR T cells like what we have seen in CLL, like for more than 10 years? This is a Carl June paper mm -hmm. in two CLL patients more than 10 years. Do we have something similar in lymphoma? Uh, so not 10 years, but uh, we, do, we do see persistence of CAR T cells over several years. However, uh, this doesn't mean that there is functional persistence because many of these patients 
may have circulating CAR T cells, which can still be detected several months or even years after infusion. However, at the same time, they have recovered B cells, uh, demonstrating that this is not a functional persistence. These CAR T cells do not eradicate B cells anymore. Okay, we'll take a couple of last questions because I know we, we're, we're running late and we need to uh, let you go for your other commitments, Rock. Uh, uh, the role of OTO, uh, any role for a sequence between OTO and CAR T cells in follicle lymphoma today? Hmm. So, it, it, you know, OTO in, 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 in follicle lymphoma is a matter of debate. Uh, we know that uh, autologous stem cell transplantation does uh, increase progression-free survival, although it's not been demonstrated that it does increase overall survival. So, uh, and again, and this is a toxic regimen. I mean, there's a risk of my myelodysplasia in the long term of, uh, or leukemia. So uh, for these patients with uh, we, who have a very uh, good prognosis and, and long-term survival, this should be a concern. Um, we tend to uh, reserve or limit uh, this indication to uh, patients with um, early relapses or obviously transform uh, follicular lymphoma. But um, as we get more of these uh, therapies like CAR T cells, I would tend probably to use less autologous stem cell transplantation and just uh, Move, uh, move to CAR T cells uh, instead. Wonderful. One last question about the sequence. Assuming tomorrow we have uh, uh, some biospecifics available, uh, well, what would be the right sequence between biospecific and CAR T cells? Would you use biospecific as a bridge to CAR T cells? Or you would you would you start first with bispecific and then uh, take CAR T cells for later? Although I personally think, given the results, I would rather give CAR T cells single shot treatment and then patient have a treatment free interval. I don't know. I know it's pure speculation. We don't have evidence based. But what are your thoughts as an expert? No, I, I agree with you. I mean, this is uh, there is a, a you know financial consideration. But uh, if we if we're just talking about you know medical uh, strategy. Uh, it would probably make a lot more sense to uh, start giving uh, CAR T cells before by specific antibodies be because of the prolonged remissions it, it, is, uh, it, it can induce. It, it, in reality, I don't think CAR T cells will ever become you know, first-line treatment for uh, follicular lymphoma uh, because you know, of the cost and because it should probably be limited to patients with a, a very, uh, with a poor prognosis and probably patients with good prognosis don't necessarily need to receive CAR T cells at least early in their treatment. Um, I think one of the big difference uh, between CAR T cells and bispecific antibodies is that uh, bispecific, I, I, I personally believe that it's, it's likely that bispecific antibodies will uh, at the end be given in first line therapy uh, in combination with other uh, standard therapies. And uh, so uh, actually CAR T cells will probably be uh, the treatment of uh, patients who have relapsed uh, after a bispecific containing regimen. Uh, this is just speculation again, but uh, um, it, 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 well, there are clinical trials uh, evaluating bispecific antibodies in first line for patients with follicular lymphoma, or they will be soon. Uh, so, um, so th this is really fascinating. And actually the debate about the pharmacoeconomics becomes very interesting because in theory, CAR T cells are relatively expensive. But when we're starting talking about medians around three years, then if you uh, divide it by a year of life, and apparently, as you said, nicely said, it's more about acute toxicity than then they live long and well. Uh, we may need to rethink the way uh, we uh, consider this issue of pharmacoeconomics. But uh, for the time being, uh, I think you did a great job. We've been together, Rock, for uh, 50 minutes, and, 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 and we could have stayed you know, for another couple of hours, given the number of questions we have received. I do apologize, guys. I didn't take the questions about allogenic stem cell transplantation. I didn't take uh, lots of questions about different bispecific, et cetera, but we thought to uh, uh, concentrate on the most exciting recent data uh, and uh, the approval 
example, the recent approval uh, in uh, follicular lymphoma of CAR T cell is really uh, great news for many patients. And I was personally very impressed with the ELARA uh, results because I, I usually don't follow daily, you know, the news of lymphoma. So that was really a, a great uh, continuous medical education for me. So I hope, guys, you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Rock, uh, for having taken the time to do this. And uh, I hope uh, that you have enjoyed it. Uh, and thank you for being loyal to the ICH educational activities. And wherever you are, as we say, please stay safe and keep well. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. C'est top. Merci.